there'd be a lot of poop in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a six foot alligator go swing into the air and slam into a tree. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh yeah, Mothman. A great white shark was stolen. Oh, someone stole a shark? I got stuff for you you don't even know about. She's a witch, she turned me into a newt. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. It's really big mm -hmm. abduction vibes. Holy moly. It sounds like you were abducted. And it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the f Hello, hello, and welcome back to Crimson of the Corn Podcast. I'm the great and magical mystery. What? Oh, yes. And you are? Powerful clone oh. 54J. I just put the I put the powerful down for two seconds and you already picked I it up. I grasped it up, yes. Oh. When there's a vacuum, a you power vacuum, it. yes. Uh, I will fill it. But alas, we're not alone today, thank goodness. This is the first interview we've done in a while. It's been a while. It's been uh Kelly's just came out, but it was recorded well, a, a long quite a time while ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is how that works. But uh why don't you introduce our guest? Today we are joined by, um, well, a member of our Cryptids and Coffee uh, banter. Oh, He's yeah. always in the chat. Um, author, musician, visionary leader of men and most animals, <laughs> also inventor of fun-sized bacon, Timothy Wayne Williams. Hey, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? Did I forget artist on that? Yes. Oh, no, I, I thought I led with artist. I don't think you said artist. Did I skip over artist? Artist. No, well, he's okay. an amazing artist. Maybe, well, I was going to say that. Well, we first, <laughs> I thought I said it. Maybe I skipped that's over like it. That's like my main gig. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited about the bacon part. I wanted to get that in. <laughs> I understand. No, that but, was funny. Speaking of. But I about peed myself. On the artist part, when we first, we first ran in or first introduced to Timothy was at CryptidCon last year. He was set up in the booth right beside us. Yeah. Had a display of full of amazing paintings that I really enjoyed looking at. Oh, I, I got to get one this year for the new studio. Which oh, my, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because his well, my favorite, well, the series you do, a lot of them are finding the hidden Bigfoots. The paintings, yeah. which I love those. So it was weird because I would see those online all the time well, well before we met you, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then you set up beside us at Crypticon, and I'm looking at like, hey. oh, that's the guy that does all those. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> it finally clicked. Yeah. It's, and then, it's a lot different in seeing stuff in person than it is when yeah. you see it online, you know, everywhere, basically. And you got amazing stuff. You do amazing calendars. Uh, I think right. we follow you. You post pretty regularly on Facebook all this, all the paintings all you're working the time. on. Almost every day, really. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what's been – definitely the UFO in the Bigfoot's been – my ro most recent favorite. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's the one you wanted to buy, like, mm -hmm. bad. We'll see. I still may get it. Do you still <laughs> have it or did it finally sell? I, you know what? I do still have it. I had a lady who was who was going to buy it and um, backed out. So I do Ooh. still have it. We'll talk off air. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully my wife's not in the other room hearing this. <laughs> Maybe divine intervention. Just make sure all the doors are closed. Yeah. She's <laughs> like, you, you spend enough money. Like my, you know what? I am probably the most reasonable artist you're ever gonna find, especially a oil painter. Art's oh. worth the money, everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's you know sitting up next to artists and stuff like we're already on tangents. It's, anybody that's listened to our show before knows this. Here's my big thing with art: is a lot of people will go into these shows and be like, not prints per se, but mm -hmm. actual. You know what you do? Art, you know, art on canvas and that stuff, and they'll be like. Well, it's just too much and cost too much. It oh, yeah. takes you guys so many hours mm -hmm. and so much time and talent to do that stuff. It's worth it. And I'll, I'll say that from because I was in art school for a little bit. I've done a few oil paintings before, but I don't think people appreciate um, not only if the final product of the art, how good it is, but if someone that's done it before, you understand how much effort 
it goes into each little layer of the to create a, a final product that looks good. There's so much more that goes just into it that an untrained eye goes right over their head. They oh, would never, yeah. never see yeah, or notice. It's, it's not just that. It's it's all the hours it took for you to get to this yeah. point. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all the years, you know, that took to get to this point. You know, I have people all the time who are like, man, you're cranking them out, you know? And it's like, you don't understand. I've been painting for, you know, 20 plus years. And um, I've developed a style that is kind of in between realism and, and impressionism. And it, mm -hmm. I can do it kind of fast, you know? But I paint like sometimes 16 hours a day. You know, it's, it's, it's really the only way I can keep the lights on, you know, mm -hmm. I have yeah. to keep painting because I'll do a painting and maybe I'll post it and maybe no one's interested, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I got to get another one out, you know? So I paint constantly. I mean, so much that I've got horrible, uh, tendonitis. It's actually probably carpal tunnel and, uh, but I'm dealing with that, but, uh, yeah. So I'm, you know, I just paint a lot. <laughs> Well, it takes you, what do they say? It takes 10,000 hours no, to yeah, master way something to that. get to that level. Oh, <laughs> I calculated it up one time. I was like, I'm way beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I, now, since we're still on painting, I do have a, I think it's, it was controversial when I was in school. My, oh my uh, gosh. This. My teacher Ooh. hated this man, but what are your opinions on Bob Ross and his paintings? Oh, God. You know, he, he actually did that show about 30 minutes from here. Really? Um, you know, Bob, was great. Bob was a very kind, beautiful soul mm -hmm. who, you know, and I, I kind of am with him on this. I'll never be in a museum known, you know, as, you know, I'll never be in some big fancy museum. And and he used to say that he's like, you know, I know I'm not going to do that. I've created this style that makes people happy. I know it's not, you know, super technical, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, I, I would like to think mine's a little more technical, yeah. Um, but um, no, I, you know, I liked Bob. Just you know, I his art, yeah, was a little. Some people, you know, say it was a little hacky. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to say that, but um, it, it, you know, it was simple. You know, he had a time frame. You know, right. he had to get it done in, and so he did it really fast. <laughs> and uh, I have nothing against that. Um, I get it, um, but. Yeah, I think I want to take a little more time, you right. know, and I, and I want to put a little more detail, a little more thought. And, um, <clears throat> but no, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I use a few of his techniques. I, I never like watched him religiously, but I did watch him a little bit. Um, yeah, some of them, especially like with water and stuff, I'd love, I'd love some of the techniques he did. And so, yeah, you know, I, I like the guy. You know, I'm not going to call him a hack like right. some artists. Do. Yes, I think some people get it a little bit too into my, their own. My old boss absolutely hated him. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, yeah. I just and, thought – oh, go on, sorry. I was going to say she hated him because she said he ripped the whole bit from his art teacher because hmm. his mm. art teacher had a TV show. I watched it one time on YouTube. It's not nearly as good. Oh, was it the German guy? Yeah. It's I scary. It's one. almost scary to watch. <laughs> It's, yeah, I, I I don't think I've ever watched that guy. I know who he is. Though. It's like, and he's a fine artist too, and whatever. It just his TV show was not like Bob's was relaxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bob's even if you we weren't painting along or whatever was just kind of like something you put on in the background to just to relax do stuff. Yeah. You, know? you know, I I feel Bob almost invented ASMR. If you know I what think so. <laughs> I mean, seriously. without realizing it, mm -hmm. yeah. I just I recently did a uh, it's my first painting demo. And it's like, I don't really like to teach, you know, mm -hmm. I do kind of like a wine and canvas thing every now and then that's just kind of for fun. But, you know, I don't really feel like I'm qualified to be a hardcore teacher. So I decided I, I would do a painting demo, but I was just going to do an ASMR thing. It was just like, I'm, it's going to be real quiet and I'm just going to, you know, you're going to hear just the brush strokes, you mm -hmm. know, mostly. I talk a little, but it's, you know, real quiet and the room's dark and, uh, and it actually got quite a few views. I'm surprised. It's it's doing well on YouTube. And That's awesome. It's only been up for a couple of weeks. So yeah, I'm I'm probably going to do more. I, I, it was fun to do. Oh, That's good. awesome. So it's a uh, if if you want to see it, it's um, it's on YouTube. It's 
It's the Timothy Wayne Williams campfire painting. Yep. The link will be below everybody. So you just, oh, it'll sweet. be that top yeah. link. Yeah. You just click that. Okay. Yeah. What is your YouTube channel just under your name, Timothy Wayne Williams? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. So yeah, don't worry, everybody. I'll make it real easy for you to find all of the right. stuff. All down and below. Buy a calendar, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Buy yeah, all. Let's talk about that. Buy, buy 10 calendars. All right. Uh, it's like I said, there's probably a price break at 50. <laughs> Buy so, 50. Buy 50. Don't be shy. Christmas yeah. gifts. Don't be shy. <laughs> Christmas you know, I, gifts. I, I go on this big rant where I'm like, you know, it's probably safest to have a calendar in every room of your house, <laughs> you know, because you never know when you're going to not know the date. Right. Exactly. You know, so you, you got to be safe. Just you wanna, get one for every room. You want to waste your time and go to the, you know, the other room to see what day it is? Come on. Heck yeah, no. No, you don't want that. Who wants to live that Crazy. life? It's me crazy. And, me and you could pull, you could pull a muscle. You don't know. <laughs> you could die. You absolutely could die. Half of all doorway deaths happen in a doorway. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just I don't, something like. I Ryan think Stiff I think a hundred thousand people die every year looking for a calendar. I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. <laughs> it's on. A, it's on a metric somewhere. Study will yeah. be cited below. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. us. We did the study. <laughs> now, so first thing I'd love to talk about is kind of that, you know, the where's Bigfoot aspect. Yeah. You know, and some of your paintings, I can find them. There's still a couple. I, I can't remember which one it was. If it was the river and the mist that took me the longest. There's a lot. I haven't found it. <laughs> what was the yeah. one you always take to shows? Is it, is there five Bigfoots or six Bigfoots in the one? Or am oh. I misremembering? I drank a lot, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I do too. So... I don't know. I do so many. Um, yes. Because you always have different stuff. We've seen you at other conferences yeah. and stuff. You always have some so much different oh, yeah. stuff, whether it's ghosts or sea monsters or, you know, the Bigfoot stuff is kind of the stuff that gets out there a lot, but you do a lot of cool stuff. Thanks. Yeah, I just got done doing a castle with a bunch of ghosts all over it. That's awesome. So yeah. where did that kind yeah. of finding Bigfoot idea come from? You know, it's it's the craziest thing. Um you know, I, I was just a regular kind of fine artist for a long time. I did the fine art circuit, you know, around here with modest success. You know, I'm not going to say I did great. I did good, you know. Um, then one day I was just painting in, in my studio and I was listening to a podcast and I love the paranormal. And I don't remember what it was, but I was listening to a podcast about Bigfoot. And uh, I was doing this landscape and I just thought, ah, you know, it's going to be funny. Just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to hide a little Bigfoot in this painting, you know, in the background, you know, just for my own amusement. So I, I did that and um, I didn't tell anyone. And um, I started doing it to a bunch of my paintings. I probably did two dozen paintings that I never told the people who bought them that there was a Bigfoot in them. You <laughs> That's know? awesome. <laughs> And I, I love the idea of that, like, maybe one day they'll be like, you know, walking by the painting and go, hey, you know, wait a minute, you know, what is that? You know, I love that idea. Well, um, one day I was, I was doing an art show and it was kind of slow. And um, just to keep people in the booth, I was like, hey, you want to check this painting out over here? There's a Bigfoot in it, you know. And um, I noticed people were kind of digging it. Mm -hmm. People were like sticking around in the booth to look for it. And they really liked it, you know, and, you know, kids and adults were digging it, you know, it wasn't like where's Waldo where, you know, it's kind of a kid thing. I mean, the adults were really digging it. So, um, <clears throat> I, I did an art show where I committed to just paranormal art pretty much. And I wanted to see how it went over. And it did not go over good. Oh, it's like these people were very kind of snooty and didn't get it, you know, the, you know, the hardcore fine art crowd. Mm -hmm. So I made a decision right then and there. It was like, you know, I know they do all these cool conferences, you know, for Bigfoot and everything else. And those seem so fun. And I love the paranormal, paranormal and, and all Bigfoot stuff. It's like, I wonder you know, if I could just do those and oh my gosh, I sell so much better at those shows and uh, the people are nicer. It's just <laughs> oh, really yeah. fun. 
And so I, I, I haven't done a like normal fine art show in probably three or four years. It's just like, I've committed now, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing paranormal art. I'm doing these shows and, um, you know, I'm, I'm posting them primarily on just paranormal groups, you know, and, uh, it's, it's going well. I mean, so well that I was able to quit my job of 32 years and do this full time. Um, awesome. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember at Crypticon, you have the big blackboard you set up all your paintings on. Yeah, and yeah, just, my black walls. Yeah. yeah, and over the weekend it just kept getting more and yeah. more and more black. Yeah, and at the very end, I don't think you packed up many paintings. Oh no, I, I did, but uh, yeah, no, it was great. It yeah. was great. It was. Uh, I I love that. Uh, that just I just was in West Virginia this last weekend, and the, and the same thing happened, and I was overjoyed because it was a very small show and i did not know how well it would go over and um early that day one guy came in and bought four paintings like right away and I was like, <laughs> okay this is gonna be good this is good yeah it's like me hitting the 50 dollars scratcher right off the rip right off the rip <laughs> yeah it was, it was like as soon as that guy bought them i was like okay i've covered my cost everything else is profit right. now oh you yeah know? so i was pretty stoked about that oh What's your question? No, I just I love the that that whole story about the fine arts uh kind of, so, almost like rejecting you and then oh yeah then once the moment you reject them eh, everything goes positive you know shoots mm -hmm. off for you which yeah. I love that because it, it is screw crazy, those guys you know yeah, I will say this when I do fine art shows I could put a bigger price tag on things yeah, yeah. and I know that and it's like but I just. I just like doing the the, the paranormal show mm -hmm. so much better, and well, the people are nicer. And, yeah, and it's like I I am taking kind of a pay cut, you mm -hmm. know, to do these, but to me it's worth it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I just think the people in this environment, you know, they have the open mind for they appreciate art, you know, more so when they see something you know as talented as yours, something that looks that good, but then yeah. having the aspect that ties their um, interests directly into it, yes. not just in the picture. It's, well, I mean, it is in the picture itself because it parallels what anyone in the Bigfoot community, you know, wants to experience. They want to actually find, you know, have that moment where they stumble across Bigfoot and, you know, and your, your paintings kind of provides that in a small little contained space, which is fun. Yeah. You know, I'm super, I'm super fortunate that I found this little thing that it seems to resonate with people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, it's like, this is kind of a crazy little thing. You know, uh, it's like, I, I start out, I want to just make a nice painting, you know, um, that could stand on its own, you know, w whether there's a Bigfoot in it or not, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I want to do. So if you're not a Bigfoot fan, you still might. And I and I have a percentage of, of people who buy my art who's like, ah, I don't care about Bigfoot, you know, but they like the painting anyway. Yeah. So that's, you know, what I start with is I, I just want to make a nice painting. And then, you know, there's this little element of Bigfoot in there for those people who, who dig that like I do. And um, they like the novelty of it. You know, someone comes over and, you know, looks at their, you know, you know, painting and they're like, Hey, can you find this? You know? So it, it's kind of cool. I, I like to say, I don't know, it might sound pretentious, but I like to say my art, you don't just put behind your couch and kind of just walk by it every now and then, you know, and kind of forget about it. It's like, I, I think my art makes you stop and you've got to look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to figure out, okay, what's going on here. There's a story here and you want to kind of figure it out or just use your imagination and make up what that story is and um or you want to go on your little personal expedition and look for bigfoot you know it's also a piece of art that everybody that comes into your house you're like hey can you go find that bigfoot can you yeah, find the bigfoot? can you find the bigfoot yeah. it's interactive it's right like you want to show off and that's hard to do for paintings right it's you know because we have tons and tons of art. And my wow. grandma was a very established artist. She did a lot of oil. Uh, nice. Oh, my gosh. When she passed away, we gave so much oil oil paint away. She had three dressers full of oil paint <sighs> because we didn't know what to do. We, we killed we for it. Yeah. But if I had known you then, it would have been different. You know? yeah. But we didn't know what to do with it. I think we gave it all to uh, 
a local group that does like kids painting and stuff like you know can you call them and get it back <laughs> this was years ago but it's oil paint it's still good i know it's still good yeah exactly oh my right gosh. my mom and her would fight constantly because she'd leave them all open yeah and grandma's like they don't go bad yeah was it gonna yeah, do dry right. up no and it's like no there was i remember i didn't get that either as a little kid the native american girl on the front porch yeah yeah she's a, partially in oil yeah and i kept touching it <laughs> No, and she's like, it's not dry. And I'm like, it's been, uh, it's been months. It's what been, are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> no, it's still not dried. It's, uh, but <laughs> I think it's funny, and that you sold some that you never told people they're bigfoot in it, and it's oh, yeah. 10, 15 years down the line. Some guy sitting on their couch, I mean, like, I love your bigfoot painting. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, bigfoot is right there, mm-hmm. bottom yeah. left corner. What? And then they go up, and there's bigfoot's face or whatever. Cause that's some of my love. Is like. You hide some of the like just and that because that's how people describe it. Sometimes you just see a face yeah. poking out of this bush or whatever. Yeah, and you can so overlook it. Yeah, and then when you once you see it, it's like obvious. But I think you captured a lot of people's Bigfoot experiences as well, to where mm. they're so well at hiding, even though they're some of them are humongous. That's awesome. Yeah. I have got that feedback that the people have been like, "Oh my god, that looked exactly like you know my." sighting you know hmm. um, that's how you, you know some you know like you guys were saying sometimes you haven't found them it's like matter of fact this last painting that i posted um i made it unbelievably obvious because you would not believe the percentage of people i have who are like i never find the bigfoot and they're kind of frustrated you know so every now and then i'll do an extremely easy one you know just so people can say, okay, I found it, you know. Now, some of them, and I, I pride myself of being pretty good about picking out a lot of shapes and stuff like that. Everybody that's a listener knows, so I was an endangered species biologist. I dealt with very small animals looking very looking crannies and find them. Nice. And still some of yours I can't find. So I get that. But I think that's what makes it fun. Yeah. I'd say a majority of them I cannot find. Hey, Jay, Jay's looking through I'm, them right I'm now. I'm looking through one right now just to see. Like, it's fun. Every time they pop up, like you, you post them on our Facebook page all the time. Yeah, and I love it. I, oh, yeah. Every time one pops up, I click on it. All right, where's it at? And then if I can't find it after a while, I just all right, I give up. So one time, I got a funny story for you about one of your paintings. You posted in the in the in the caption, you said something like, uh, "I may not even add a Bigfoot to this one, or not. I haven't decided." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't read that, and I'm in there looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm set. I, I think me and Emily were having dinner, and I'm like. I cannot find this one. I can't find a shape that looks like it. I can't. Before, and then I read the caption, and Emily's like, there's not one in there yet. It's like, <laughs> ah. That explains it. But put my fist through the wall. I was going to say, you look yeah, like. always read the caption. Yeah. Always. You look like Robin Williams in uh, Jumanji when he comes out, and he's like, he has the beard and the mm-hmm. long hair. Like he's been stuck in the game for years. I've been looking at my phone till it died, trying to figure <laughs> out where this Bigfoot is. But you don't do just Bigfoot. Like we said, you do normal art, like, quote unquote normal art. But you also do, I've seen some of your sea monster stuff, ghost yeah. ships, ghosts. What's kind of, I mean, you do a lot of Bigfoot, but what's kind of some of your other favorite ones you do? Uh, you know, I consider my, you know, myself this pirate. And so... <laughs> You know, I, I have this pirate delusion. So I love doing tall ships in ocean scenes. Love, mm. love, love, love that. So I, I do a lot of that. And every now and then I'll put a, you know, sea monster in there somewhere, Kraken or something. Mm-hmm. And um, those to me are super, super fun. I really like doing those. Yeah. Emily banned me, my wife banned me for a little bit from buying specifically aquatic monster art because it got to be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong that is just wrong on so many levels and i was like and then i started doing it again like after a couple months because yeah. i mean to be fair like where i'm looking around because this room's just full of cryptid art from all around the world and uh, there, there's quite a heavy skew towards the aquatic it is funny like that's the specific band you get yeah it's just it's just yeah. what i do <laughs> I, I will say you know i used to be super into the whole like loch ness monster thing I read like literally everything I could get my hands on. And um, I don't know, after a while, I'm kind of like, I'm not sure if that was ever real. You know, that I, I will say I kind of gave up on that one. Ooh. I do think there are sea serpents in the ocean. There are things we don't know about. But as far as actual, the Loch Ness, you yeah. know, Nessie, I am not so sure that that thing exists anymore. 
I'm, you know, I'm just. I'll tell you. That's about the only cryptid I'm skeptical on anymore. I'll tell you. We did a three-parter on Nessie. You should go and listen to it. Oh, yeah? Got yeah. some some perspectives maybe you've never heard before that might oh, re-spark some it. interest. Because keep my like, so I was a fishery biologist. It's what I did for a living. That's uh, awesome. And so we added a lot of stuff to it and made I think make a lot more stuff make sense with the sightings and some of the data and stuff collected to make the monster more real and explain how she could still be out there or a small group of them still could be out there. Love it. What do you think? I would say I don't want to spoil the ending for it, him. It it convinced it opened my mind to it. So yeah, it's it's. I I, I would love to believe again. Yeah, or maybe so we can I help you out. out. Yeah, I think we can relight that spark. What's, <laughs> what's your question for him? As far as this like, next question. Oh, I thought. Oh, I kind of wanted to get into uh, his uh, top ten uh, Bigfoot things. Oh. He sent us the list. Oh wait, oh. before we get into that. Yeah, I wanted. To, I, I want to talk about his calendar. Oh, oh, good idea. Good oh, idea. Love where your head's at. Yeah. No, so yeah, because we'll do that then and we'll talk about some okay. of his own stories. Okay. His own encounters and stuff. Okay. Uh, you can see, you tell, we're definitely professionals. Uh, <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, tell us about the calendar or tell everybody oh, else about yeah, the calendar. Yeah. Um, how this calendar got started was um, I was friends with Doug Hycheck on Facebook. And uh, every now and then I would send Doug some of my paintings. And um, Doug became sort of a fan, and uh, and you know he, he's a really cool guy, and he uh, has a publishing company with his son Alex, and um, we started talking about doing a project together, and uh, we decided we'd do this calendar, and uh, it's it's of my hidden Bigfoot paintings, and you know it's twelve months each each month is a different painting that has a, you know, Bigfoot hidden in it somewhere. And I tell people, you know, this is a really good price point. You know, it's, it's like $29 mm-hmm. or something. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun, unique calendar in my opinion. You know, if you're going to have something, if you're going to have a calendar on your wall, this, this thing is fun, you know, and uh, the feedback I've got from people, you know, I put one out last year, and it's been amazing. And, and this year, it's been really good, too. So, um, yeah, if, if you guys need, so, you know, if anyone needs something for a uh, present, you know, Christmas is coming. This is a perfect gift for someone into the paranormal. Buy 30 of them. <laughs> exactly. Price break at 50, probably. I don't know that. For probably. Sure. They just cut the difference and call it 75. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, it's I, I love it. I just from what you've shared and stuff like that. So that is this the twenty four into twenty five calendar? Just twenty four. Just twenty four. Yeah. So we'll you're gonna be at Crypticon again, right? Yes. Yes. So we'll most likely be picking one up for the studio for next year because oh yeah, the calendar on the wall right now is looking rough. Right. On. You can't see it, but it's right behind the computer, and it's it's up there. It's you mm-hmm. can tell it's been up there for almost a year. <laughs> it's 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 had its days. Uh no, that's awesome. Everybody seriously, you know, support him if you can. The calendar's awesome. It's basically buying a print book. Yeah, it is. The paintings are super you know, nice in it. I you know what? I have a ton of people who, who say on last year's calendar is like, Yeah, as soon as I was done with the calendar, I cut the paintings out and I framed them. Yeah. Oh, awesome. the pictures. They're I'm getting, like, Are you serious? And they're like, Oh yeah. You're getting twelve paintings for thirty dollars. Where else are you gonna do that? Yeah, you're not for gonna do that. Twelve cents a day. <laughs> for twelve cents a day, you can sponsor an artist. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, so you sent us over. You you will help keep my uh, dogs in. You'll help keep my dachshunds in uh, chew toys. No, so, <laughs> it's it's for the dogs. And and you know I always say to uh, dirty uh, Margaret or dirty martinis are not gonna buy themselves. Exactly. So that's right. The the liquor doesn't pay for itself. You guys are normally very good for us with that. Help him out. Now, before we move on to the top 10 things, I want to say that we'll have the link for your YouTube up first. I know there's a link to buy the calendar. Yeah, I'll get you there. And then where, how, if people want to get a hold of your paintings, what's the best way for them to do that? 
Well, you know, I got rid of my uh, website. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it was expensive. No one seemed to be going to it. I was doing all my business through Facebook. So I got rid of my uh, website, which is funny. It's on the calendar all over the place. Like, go to this web. No, don't go to the <laughs> website. Go to uh, uh, Facebook. Go to my artist website, which is t.w.williamsfinearts. Okay. So we'll have... Mm. Sorry. Got some stuck in my throat for a second. <laughs> we'll have all your links below for everybody. If Sweet. You, if you can support them, support them. Uh, just, Please. you know, what we tell everybody, this community supports itself pretty well. But, yeah, so we'll have all that. Now, you sent us over, what's it called, Jay? Uh, it is called uh, Timothy Wayne Williams Presents. Top 10 things we will learn about Bigfoot once he has been found. So before we continue with this, I just have to give my warning for everybody. <laughs> There's some language in it. That's that's your warning. If you're in the car with kids, you know, turn it down well, for a couple minutes. I can always... Uh... Just read it how he how he wrote it. This is just some little wacky thing I did a few years ago that I don't know. You may or may not find fun. I only read two of them. It made me laugh, and I wanted to hear the rest of them real time. Okay. Oh, okay. So here we go. And I haven't read any of these yet. I so. cannot wait. Okay. Number one, wood knocks. Wood knocks have been th have long been thought to have been some sort of communication technique used among the Bigfoot species. This is in fact false. Wood knocks are actually songs written by the Bigfoot. They are just really crappy musicians. <laughs> there, <laughs> there once was a Bigfoot that made eight knocks, eight knock little ditty. He's considered the Mozart of the species. <laughs> <laughs> so they're still developing their musical prowess. I'm probably going to pee during this list. Oh, boy. Well, that coincides with number two. Oh, yeah. Let's hear Number it. two, their terrible odor. <laughs> there have been lots of theories on this one. Pheromones have long been researchers' best guess. The fact of the matter is pretty simple, actually. They all love Taco Tuesday so much they decided to have Mexican food for every meal. On a side note, there is a heated debate among the Sasquatch as to eating an actual Mexican. Is that Mexican food or not? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's an important yeah, debate. Yeah, it is. There, it's a he been a heated debate for... Heated. Yeah, hundreds the, of years. The answer is, is yes. Is that Mexican food? Think about <laughs> it. I think it's correct. Let, let, I think the only people that can answer that is the uh, the local uh, uh, cannibals, you know, mm. out that live out in the desert. Maybe. The desert. Now, I don't know where else they Where else would a cannibal the live? The local cannibals out in the desert. Local is relative to this uh, country. Oh, I was like, in Ohio, one, yeah, the local desert. The ones uh, close to Mexico. I got you. I got those you. deserts. I'm like, and you met here, and I'm like, not that local. You show me the local desert, please. <laughs> okay, next number three origins. We will find out. Sas Sasquatch was actually created in the genetics labs of the plaster of Paris manufacturers. This is all an elaborate scheme cooked up by big plaster to sell more casting products. You almost said the exact same thing on an earlier episode we recorded today. Really? Yeah. What did I say? About Bigfoot being from a genetics lab. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just didn't say who was sponsoring it, the Plaster Paris company. Yeah, I didn't say it was hey. Big Plaster. Hey, some someone's got to make all that plaster for casting. It's just, it makes sense, that Big Plaster. <laughs> well, you know, I, I can corroborate that, you know, with the Big Plaster lobby in Washington, D.C. You know, they're they've huge. been fueling money into the into the into the uh, uh congress money. in the past like two or three years flooding money Just pallets of cash pallets yep. <laughs> so you know it adds up i gotta okay keep going number four bigfoot love to play practical jokes one of their favorite practical jokes <laughs> okay hold on i'm gonna <laughs> okay. it, it. hold on let me start over okay because <laughs> i read it and i started laughing Okay, one of their favorite practical jokes is to crap in campers' picnic baskets when they're sleeping. They call it pulling a bad yogi. <laughs> pulling a bad... That's so awesome. Now we can blame it on Bigfoot when we do it. That's true. When we go camping. There you go. Okay, number five. <laughs> okay, cold play. They effing love cold play. Strangely, though, they can't stand Gwyneth Paltrow. In That's fact, crazy. they hate her. There was much rejoicing when her and Chris Martin split up. 
<laughs> which she's the lead singer Coldplay, right? Yeah, I mean that's a, that. This one's a little obscure, but hey, you know it is what it is. You know, uh, when two, when two things happen, you know, at once, it's not a coincidence anymore. They just yeah. happen to be happy, and they happen to. I mean, it adds up. Yeah. <laughs> Number six appearance. Sasquatch have regular meetings to discuss the latest techniques in making one's self more blurry. Oh, who was who was that joke? The famous comedian that said, "Oh, Bigfoot's just blurry." Mitch Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg. Okay. He said, "There's a reason why every photo of Sasquatch is blurry. It's because maybe Sasquatch is blurry. blurry. That's the problem." <laughs> That's funny. And that even to, and he said to even that even to me is even more scary because we have a. Big, furry, out-of-focus creature roaming the countryside. <laughs> Love Mitch Hedberg. He's so he funny. reminds me of my Uncle Rob. <laughs> I can kind of see it. I but... mean, just the way he talks and his kind of mannerisms. I can Not see... the personality-wise, just how right. they talk and their mannerisms. Right, yeah. And same length of hair, I'd say. Yeah. Same style of glasses. They could be cousins. They could be. They probably wouldn't agree on much, but <laughs> Uncle no, Rob listens to the show. He'd probably agree. Maybe. I don't know. Number seven, rock throwing. Okay, this one's longer. Here we go. Rock throwing is not a threatening action taken to ward off intruders. It's actually the most highly regarded sport of their kind. There's an elaborate point system for nailing things with rocks. For instance, knocking a marshmallow off a Girl Scout's roasting stick, 10 points. Jeff Meldrum, upside the head, 50 points. <laughs> if you somehow, some way are able to bean Gwyneth Paltrow, game over, you win. It's like catching the snitch. <laughs> You will be celebrated for years. <laughs> Catching the snitch. <laughs> Very equivalent outcome there. I don't know what was funnier, the actual jokes, <laughs> or you squinting holding the phone uh, six inches from your face because you need glasses. Small text. Let me turn my phone <laughs> sideways. No, that's even worse. Oh, oh I'm, I'm wait. Seriously, <laughs> P. I like the point system. That's I never thought yeah, of that, but yeah. it makes so much Catching sense. Catching the gold snitch. <laughs> Number eight, the Patterson-Gimlin film. The Sasquatch in the film is not a female. It's a male named Carl that has let his upper body workouts slide a bit. He has roundly been made fun of by other Sasquatch for years for not being blurry enough to have and having a nice rack. <laughs> <laughs> Carl? I have heard stories of Carl's rack. I didn't realize it was one in the same. Mm. That might be that blurry, you know, the mudding the waters, you know, the misinformation stuff that comes out about, about Bigfoot. It's finally, it's finally good to get some clarity, clar yep, clarity on this subject. Uh. <laughs> okay, number nine, future plans. Bigfoot often talk of maybe shaving themselves down and joining in with human society. Their biggest concern is overwhelming all the great clips in the Pacific Northwest. Wait, explain that one. All the great oh, clips. Do you not have great clips in the Pacific Northwest? Or wait, don't oh, you have great clips? Great yeah. clips in oh, Ohio, okay. The hair great clips hair place. place. Okay, okay. Let me reread yeah. that again. Okay. Great clips. They don't want to over overwhelm great clips. Oh, oh gotcha. With all that shaving. Oh gosh, they're gonna have to be shaved pretty regularly. They yeah. might have to like split it between great clips and sport clips. Yeah. They might have to <laughs> divide their their effort between that was the two. Funny. <laughs> and lastly, but number ten. Claiming kills. Hunters have long been annoyed by having their kills claimed by Sasquatch before they can track the blood trail to them. This is not one of their practical jokes. It's just them being dicks. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even want it. They're just yoink. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going to cough it all night now. That was good. So that, oh, thank you. that is Timothy Wayne's, or Timothy Wayne Williams' Top ten things we will learn about Bigfoot once he has been found. I love it. it. That reminds that me of my uh, chest. It reminds me of uh, what you'd see on like David Letterman's top ten. Oh yeah, I mean that's kind of what inspired it. Yeah, <laughs> it's very but in the same vein. I like it a lot. I miss those. That yeah. was good. That was a good revisit. I only read the first two when he sent it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're reading this. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. I think my yeah, favorite one is the. I that's I do a little writing like that every now and then, some little wacky thing, and uh, they usually go over pretty good. Well, so. I can only imagine why you're painting the things that go through your head, your inner <laughs> dialogue. 
So I, yeah. I feel like that may have been some of its inspiration. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you aggravated my lungs great. Oh, great. I would Wonderful. cough on all night. Everybody's going to think I got the big my C. Well, my favorite one is the, th is the rock throwing point system. That's Yeah, Jeff Meldrum upside the head, man. That's, yeah. that's my second favorite. Yeah. The last one's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. They're all pretty good, though. They're all great, but... Thank you. I almost I may have peed a little for the last one. It's well, what's new? Uh, but I'm in my house, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't I, matter. I can walk and go change right after this. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, that was good. And then once again, before we move on to some of your encounters and or your, you know your stuff, support support them if you can, and support locally and all that stuff. You know the, S the community is super artists. small, and we all enjoy each other. Like you said, the community is great. When we you know we travel all around, we've been blessed to be able to go all over the country and do this stuff. And I've never had, you know, really any, there's been bad individuals, but I've never been to some place where the whole crowd was, you know, negative or anything. It's all been great. Yeah. You go to these, Absolutely. you have so much fun. And like I, I was going to say it earlier, like you said, with the snooty artist at the normal one, my grandma was a painter and she was, you know, she won some awards and stuff like that locally. And they all hated her because she didn't come from any background or anything like that. You know, she was just an old lady that she didn't start painting until... She was in her 50s and did it, sorry, and did it as a hobby, and she got really good at it, and, you know, they all hated her for it, and it's just something, it's like, we've talked about it with other fields. Oh, yeah. It's weird that we get these higher level things, and there's so much hate out there, and then you come into this kind of community, and there's a lot more love, a lot more appreciation, yeah. you know, just for the stuff you do. Yeah. I, I was totally an outsider, too. It's like... Uh, there's all these, you know, art leagues around here. I, I never joined any of them. Mm -hmm. I just, I just didn't like that, you know? And, uh, I just always did my own thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they definitely saw me as an outsider. Yeah. Definitely. So I just was, so everybody, you know, it's not, and you're just, your experience is just what the art community kind of is as far yeah. as the kind of the big, big mainstream art. art community. Big art. We'll Cause call it. grandma didn't like entering. Yeah. And grandpa would make her. Mm -hmm. because he thought she was so good yeah. and she was you know she won stuff and everything and she just didn't you know she just did it for fun and i just remember grandpa would you know how aggressive my grandpa could be over my grandmother i guess i suppose i mean he beat up the mayor over well true yes in front of the cops he did that there's that story mm -hmm. yes nice uh no it was bad it was bad oh really he's been in jail he was in jail a lot he definitely, his last couple of years, he <laughs> simmered out. It just took cancer three times to kind of slow relax him, him. Yeah. But that will do it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm coughing. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so you said you had some encounters of some kind of stuff. We don't know anything about it. So we'd okay. like to, we'd yeah. like to hear them. Um, some people may have heard this before. I, I tell this on other podcasts, but um, I've had kind of a demonic counter i mm. think mm -hmm. and i and i might have a strange angelic encounter something i bet you've never heard anything like mm. but i'll tell you the possible demonic one first um i was a musician for a long long time i was a drummer i was a professional drummer before i became a painter and um when i was in high school though you know i started bands here and there and i had this band in high school and we had rented out this club, basically. Um, this club sometimes had a bar in it, um, but since we were all underage, we the bar wasn't open. And um, <clears throat> it was just this just huge building, had two uh, garage doors, and then one door to go in and out of. And... Um, we were setting up for a show. We had uh, rented all this equipment. It's going to be a big, exciting show. And uh, we were there the night before setting up. And we had everything almost all set up. And we were getting ready to go home. And uh, we had shut the garage doors. And um, we went back and, and uh, the whole band was around the soundboard, kind of in the middle of the venue and we were talking all of a sudden we hear this loud cackling laugh i mean it was it was crazy it, it, it was a human laugh but it was really loud and cackling 
and we look over and there is this little man. When I say little, I just mean short uh, man sitting on one of our um, PA speakers laughing his butt off like at what we don't know. It's, it's like he heard the funniest joke in the world and he's just cracking up. And we're all like, where did this guy come from? And, um, and we're like looking around going, did anyone see him come in? And no one saw him come in. And there was only really at that point one way in and out and we would have seen him come in. And anyway, so this guy was, was just losing his mind laughing and everyone's like, someone needs to go talk to him and tell him to leave. And so everyone kind of pushes me up to go talk to him. So I, I go up and I'm like, hey, man, uh, what are you doing here? And you know, he finally stops laughing for a second. And uh, he's like, hey, hey, I got something for you. You're going to love this. And uh, I'm like, OK, maybe he's a drug dealer. What is this? And he pulls out a stack of Polaroids. I don't even know how he had his fingers around them. He like, I don't even know where they came from. He just suddenly like kind of reached behind him and came up with this stack of Polaroids. And uh, he's like, check these out. And he's like giving me these Polaroids and, I, and I'm looking and I'm like, oh my God, these are super pornographic, okay? And I'm like, oh, okay, this guy's a pimp. And he's like, hey, hey, I can get you this. If you, if you want any of this, and I'm like, no, 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 okay, he's a pimp. And uh, so I was like, no, no, I don't want any of this. And he's like, he's like, I can get you whatever. What do you need? What do you want? And I was like, no, I, I don't want anything from you. And he kept insisting. It's like, no, I can get you whatever you want, you know? And he just kept looking at me weird. <clears throat> and I kept saying, no, man, I, I don't want anything that you could give me. I don't want anything. And um, <clears throat> so I walk away and one of the, our guitarists walks up and of course that idiot, he's going through the Polaroids like crazy. He's like, hey, hey check this out. So anyhow, I'm like, Scott, come on. And so <clears throat> he, he leaves too. And we both go back to that soundboard where the rest of the band is and you know, our crew are standing and, and um, they're all like, what is he doing here? What does he want? What does he want? By the time it, took me to walk back and I'm talking 40 feet, 30 feet. I go back to the soundboard and um, by the time everyone kind of huddles up and they go, what is he doing here? I kind of look back before I say anything and the guy is gone, mm. just disappeared. And we're like, how did he leave? And we're like looking around. It's like he didn't go out the door. He, there was no way he could have left without us seeing him. And uh, <clears throat> everyone was kind of freaked out, you know, because it, this guy just showed up out of nowhere, <clears throat> offered us the world or me the world and then kind of left. And uh, as time went on, I really felt like this was sort of my crossroads moment, mm -hmm. you know, you know what that. I mean? It's like, I think this guy was sent from somewhere to make a deal with me. Mm. And if you would have known me back then, uh, I was super poor. My mom and I, you know, super poor. And I wanted to become a rock star more than anything. I would have given anything to become a rock star. And I feel like this guy knew that and he was testing. And, um, Anyway, that that was that was something that creeped me out, and and everyone else who was there. That it, still to this day I can't un explain how he got in and out, you know. So, I have another story that is is kind of opposite. It's kind of angelic in a way, but it's crazy because it involves a toilet. So, um, <laughs> it's not funny. It just I love the lead in. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Um, so when my when my wife and I, we got in our house and everything, we had kids and the kids were small. And um, we didn't have a lot of money. And one day we had this uh, problem with our toilet and we realized we were going to have to put a new one in. And um, didn't have the money to hire anyone to do it. 
Um, I kind of thought I could do it. You know, I, I really, my dad never taught me how to do anything, but I, I thought, you know, how hard could it be? I'll take it out and see how it's put in, you know, and then I'll put it back, you know, I'll do I'll put the new toilet just, just the same way. And so, um, I took this toilet out <clears throat> and got a new one, tried to put it in and it would not go in. There was, it just wouldn't go in right. And I was flipping out. It had already been like a day and the family was like, we're not going in a bucket anymore. And they were really upset with me that I couldn't do this. And I was really embarrassed, you know, that I couldn't fix this for the family. And, you know, I, my, one of my buddies, it was really weird. My, one of my buddies I hadn't seen for a long time just showed up out of the blue and his dad um, had owned a uh, plumbing company and he had worked with his dad some. And I'm like, oh, thank God, he'll know what to do. But I brought my buddy in and looked at it and he was at a loss. He's like, I'm not sure why this isn't going in right. You know, hmm. he like gave up and left. So I, I, I still was like just baffled that it just wasn't fitting right. And uh, <clears throat> I had gone to some of the hardware stores and talked to those idiots in the plumbing departments mm -hmm. and those guys were just not helpful at all. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some of them would give me ideas. I'd run home, try it, wouldn't work. I was getting so frustrated and, and embarrassed and, and worried, you know, it's like, I got to get this thing going. And, um, <clears throat> Finally, I was like, I'm just going to go to this one hardware store and just look around the plumbing section. Maybe something will just come to me. I don't know. So I was in this plumbing section and just staring, you know, at the supplies, dejected, pissed. And um, there was this weird guy about 20 feet away and he just calls over. He's like, hey, what you working on? And I was like, oh man, I've, you know, I've got this plumbing issue. And I didn't really want to get in, into it with him. He, he seemed younger than me and he seemed, he seemed like one of those people who <clears throat> was maybe lonely and just wanted to talk, mm -hmm. okay. you know? And normally I'm very, you know, uh, accommodating, but I just, I was so focused, you know, and I just didn't want to go into it with this guy, but he kept ins insisting, you know, what are you working on? And I was like, ah, you know, I just stupid toilet won't work. And, and he was like, no, tell me. And I was like, all right, you know, just to get him out of my face. I was like, okay, well, you know, I got this thing and it just, when I put it on the seal, it's not sealing right and blah, 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 blah. And, um, he walks like 10 feet away and grabs this part, comes back, hands me the part. He says, this is what you need. This is exactly how you put it in. And then he walks away. And as he's walking away, my wife walks up and she goes, who was that? And I'm like, oh my God, that guy just came over here and he gave me the part I think I need. And he told me exactly how to put it in. She said, did you thank him? And I'm like, I think I did, but... Let me go find him. So I saw where he went. He just went in the next row, in the next aisle. I went to go find him and make sure I thanked him. And the guy was gone, completely disappeared. Um, I looked around quite a bit. I'm not going to say I went through the entire store, but I mean, I looked around a lot in uh, all over the plumbing area, even a little outside of it. That guy was nowhere to be seen. And... I took the part home. It, it worked exactly like the guy said it would. It went in easy. It was perfect. I fixed it. And to this day, I'm like, that was like angelic because that guy, I mean, it's like he had no other purpose of being there other than to tell me how to fix that problem, mm -hmm. you know? And so anyway, it, it, I thought it was pretty amazing. And I tell people, it's like, eh, it involved the toilet, but it's like, you know, <laughs> 
you know, people are like, oh, come on, it's a toilet. It's like, no, you don't understand. You know, we had no money. I didn't have money to get a plumber in there. It It was was like, this was up to me. Yeah. You know, it's a real life hardship. And, you know, we come, I come, our family struggled for a long time. You know, we're doing a lot better now. Uh, But there was points like that. Dad had to fix everything, whether he knew how to do it or not. Yeah. And those from personal experience, I know those can be some of the most stressful times of your life because it's doesn't seem like a big thing to a lot of people. Yeah. But when you're already struggling and then this last little thing won't go right, won't go right, or won't go, it, it's when people break and yeah. it's when people snap. It really is because it's too much. Yeah. Now, I fully believe it was angelic, an angelic encounter. So we did mm-hmm. Angels, uh, Angels in the Cornfield was the name of our episode. And... A lot of these modern day, what people feel like is angel encounters or angelic encounters have a lot of that kind of notes to them. Even my own grandma's, you know, they were just guys that helped her, but it was like out of nowhere they showed up. So my grandma was in the short version real fast. My grandma was in a wheelchair. They mm-hmm. did a cruise, her and my grandpa. And grandpa called called the cruise, called the cruise, called the cruise, make sure she go get off at every stop. You know, she's in a fully, she can't get out of the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they paid, you know, like three grand a ticket. So it was a lot of money. Like, Grandpa saved up for like three or four years to take Grandma on a cruise. They get there. First stop, they got to cross a plank to get off the boat. Mm-hmm. Like a wooden board. And it can't get a wheelchair out. And so Grandma's all upset because she's not going to get to go to any of the stops. And Grandpa's literally about probably ready to kill. So I just imagine <laughs> him screaming. <laughs> and this, now if I get it right, it was a short... Like a short, heavyweight white guy, and a tall, skinny black guy. And they come up and they're like, hey, what's the problem? She's like, you know, we paid all this money. We're not going to be able to get any of these stops. And, you know, my husband's over there freaking out. And she's just like, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm really disheartened. And these two guys were like, oh, we'll get you across. And they picked her up. And she said she never once faltered, never once wobbled. And they carried her right over and dropped her off. And they're like, yeah, we'll meet you back here. We'll get you back on the ship. And they did. And Grandpa, after they got him back on, Grandpa went to find him to thank him. They're gone. Nobody on the ship. They never seen him again. They were on there for a week and a half. Every other stop, though, they could get out. It's just that first long day, they couldn't get out. And Grandpa fully believes it was an angel. They looked just like people. I mean, sure. But that wheelchair was like 350 pounds. And nothing against my grandma, but she was not the smallest person. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of weight to carry over a wooden plank over open water and not wobble. Yeah. But for your your encounter, it sounds like that kind of same notes that you yeah. were at the end of the line of a lot of stuff emotionally, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And this person just shows up and just fixes it. Yeah. You know, and like you said about emotionally, yeah, you know, it, it went so deep mm-hmm. with me. I mean, it's like, I, I had some resentment that my dad never taught mm-hmm. me anything. You know, my dad actually knew quite a bit of this stuff and he just never took the time to show me anything. And I just feel so uh, inadequate at times, you know, you know, here I'm supposed to be the, you know, head of the household, you know, the, the father, you know, who knows how to do everything. And, you know, it, it was embarrassing, you know, it's like my, my wife or her, her father knows how to fix everything. I mean, he's absolutely like this genius at, mm-hmm. at everything. There's like nothing he can't do. And so in in her eyes, I'm like completely, you know, worthless. So, yeah. And then to your demon encounter. Oh, I wanted to say oh, something sorry. about the other one. Sorry. Just remind me of the quote, like from, I got the new King James version here. Do not forget to entertain strangers for by so doing, some have unwittingly enter- entertained angels. That's like, the perfect quote. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, the other thing about that is, is um, he, he looked like someone who may have been not only lonely, but one of those people, maybe, I don't want to say mentally challenged, but mm-hmm. maybe there was some diminished something there, mm-hmm. you know? That's why I just, I kept looking at him thinking, this guy is not going to know anything <laughs> right. about anything. You know, and I, I didn't want to be rude, you know, but I, I just, at, at that time, I was like, I just don't want to deal with this. You know, I've got to fix this toilet. And and finally, when I just gave in, 
and then I realized, okay, there's something special about this guy, you know, and, and like what you just read, that's exactly, you know, how I felt afterwards. It's like, okay, I should, I should have been more open to this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I should have been nicer in the beginning, you know, angels walk among us. Don't ever, everybody at home, yeah, don't forget it. I absolutely hundred percent believe that. Now, now onto the to demon. the flip side. Yes. Angels are real. So are demons. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, I wanted to tell oh, you yeah. that that demonic guy. I want to tell you what he looked like. Yes, um, please. Because do, do you remember the movie The Shining? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you remember the groundskeeper? Scatman Carruthers is. Are you his pulling up a picture? Name. Yeah. Jay's pulling I, up a picture real I fast. I think I do, but I, I I need to see a picture. I haven't seen The Shining in forever. Oh, no, dogs okay. are losing. So, uh, it's okay. They hear it here too. Hey, uh, uh, I'm going to come right back. I'm going to deal with my dogs real quick. That's fine. okay. Is that okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Talk among yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's this guy. So uh, I'm, I'm sh this guy, in the movie, uh, the groundskeeper. Right okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. If you've seen the movie, you would. Yep, yep. Or if you've seen yeah. it relatively recently, because sometimes. Scatman Crothers. Is that what his name is? Is that the actor or? Uh, yeah, he's professional. That's his acting name. Is Benjamin Crothers? Is his, but he goes by Scatman. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's him in the in the movie. Oh, he's from Terre Haute, Indiana. I didn't know that. Oh, it's not too terribly far from all of us. I was gonna say he's in Indiana. We're Ohio. Yeah, but uh, um, oh, is that who he was gonna say? Maybe he looks like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I refresh me on the demon story real quick again because I know I had a point. Remember the demon sitting on the jukebox had the big yeah the stack. Okay, yep. Okay. okay, now I remember what I was gonna say. Yeah. So yeah, this Sorry, will be my dogs have an ongoing war with the mailman. It's <laughs> it's completely fine. You think this is the first time they've heard dogs in the background or something here? <laughs> we had one poop in the background. <laughs> we had one poop <laughs> nice. come in studio, poop on the floor, and leave. And leave <laughs> in the middle of an interview. In the middle of an interview, <laughs> and the guy we were interviewing, you could see at the back because the camera used to be up higher. So you mm -hmm. could see this little tiny dog come in. Pop poop spot. right on the floor and turn back around. And he's losing it, and we don't know what's happening. <laughs> you don't see that every day. No. And then, uh, so what I was going to say, back to the demonic encounter. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know whose encounter that reminded me of? Uh, Ross's? Yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah. So a guy we had an interview on the show, uh, well, he, he submitted his stories. Uh, he was being kind of like stalked by a different demonic entity, like a smiling man kind of entity, this big eyeless, big just teeth thing, and it would bother him every night, every night, every night. Eventually, he was so tired and so distressed. Uh, he was like in his teens, just moved to a new school, and was just having the roughest time. And then this, you know, this other demon isn't helping anything. You know, he's not sleeping, and you know, he's falling behind in school. And then eventually. A little man comes into his bedroom one night mm. and says, and he's just describing it, he's just like a little guy. And, you know, this creepy guy is just like, I can make that thing go away if you want to make a deal. Mm. And he's so distraught and he's so distraught. And he's like, finally, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll make the deal. He has no idea what he traded. No oh, idea geez. what the little man oh, wanted. God. And he went away for a really, really long time. And then a later, like years, years later, start coming back. So there's this whole thing with these, like you said, the devil in the crossroads. Mm -hmm. And I, there, we did a lot of stories of people don't necessarily realize they're making a deal. I believe that. You know, the devil can't lie to you. Like a politician. Mm -hmm. The devil can't lie to you, but can definitely manipulate a lot of the things. Like, uh, if you were to take him up on one of those offers of something, he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll deal with payment later. He didn't mm -hmm. lie to you. You don't, you don't know what you paid, whether it's mm -hmm. your soul or not, you know. And I think, especially in rock stars, I think a lot of that happens. What was the, what's the famous rock star that said, yeah, I sold my soul? Which one? Well, no, the one that was like, huh? Uh, are you talking about Robert Johnson, the, the blues guy, or Jimmy Page? Or... It may have been the blues guy, because he looked like he was dead in one of his last interviews. Even it's, Bob Dylan said, like, Oh, is it stuff. Bob Dylan? No, no, no. He's one of them. There's many, many, many artists. Well, there's this one that he looks like. Claimed it. He looks rough. Keith he looks Richards? like he's got cancer. And and he died, like, later that year after the interview. It's not Keith Richards. No, he's this guy died a couple years ago, whoever okay. I'm thinking of. I'm bad with names. Yeah, I know. But I just oh, remember just his. a couple years ago. Yeah. 
well, I mean, with COVID, I, a couple years ago, could have been six at this point. But either way, I was going to yeah. raise that question too, is I wonder how many musical artists, you know, art, even artists in general, but mostly, you know, music, people in media that, you know, we're a relatively unknown and then we're met with somebody like this and then accepted that deal. Because, you know, a lot of, for fame and notoriety, money, you know, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. It's just, I w- I'm curious if anyone else had that same experience, but they accepted. Yeah, that'd and be I, interesting. I'm sure. I, if, I yeah, think there is know. a more sophisticated thing now with some of the bigger artists, you know. Um, I don't know if I believe in the Illuminati so much, mm-hmm. but I do think there is an underground something, mm-hmm. you know some evil entity that is influencing, you know, these, these musicians. Mm -hmm. And I do think, I don't think it's come, they come right out and say, you're working for the devil or something like that. Right. But I think that is happening. Mm -hmm. I think they're slowly, I mean, if you look at some of the modern, um, look at some of the biggest selling, you know, artists, you know, musicians right now and look at their stage shows and look at the imagery. Yeah. It is freaking scary. It's like, who are you promoting here? You know? And when you, it's crazy. When you boil down their actual product, you know, what their, their music that they're presenting, it's relatively like talentless as compared to what it used to be. Oh yeah. There's no heart in it. No one I put it is like, absolutely not. No. Uh, Taylor Swift. She completely flipped. Whole, yeah. a whole different and now she has demonic stuff on stage and that's what i heard you yeah. know it, it's been a big deal like a lot of parents that are some of the parents that are paying attention yeah. are getting very upset because you go in there's like signs of baphomet and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah when you go like taylor swift i believe we originally was a small town person that made it big and all this and then like you're saying you hit you meet that group and you shake one too many hands and you may not know for a while Probably what exactly. you agreed to a slow build yeah slow a sl- they take pieces and put pieces and then you're not able to turn back and look at how far you've come and what mm-hmm. you became what's what's the other one that had the goat head recently too oh that 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 were the the baphomets banging to get out and they're like all oh, have to chant for baphomet yeah uh literally this just happened this year this big thing was like i can picture it but i can't think of his a name big singer i know his, uh, that's sam smith dude oh gosh that's his too. His is bad too. Yeah. It, it just. No, it, I that? mean, there's a lot. I can't. Just, I know who you're talking about, but the name isn't because I don't I listen. I don't listen, I don't to, listen to their music. Yeah, we don't listen to their music, so it's yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, but no, literally, the video is like nobody's supposed to record. Their, Travis Scott. Travis Scott. There we go. Thank you. I don't even know who that is. Yeah. Good. A, good. Yeah. Good. I'm so out of keep it. it that way. No. Yeah. Keep it that no, way. I mean, he's a Satan uh, worshiper and, at the at the minimum. And I only know because of that for reason alone. But in this video, he's like Baphomet. Like he's making the crowd chant to this thing. And it's behind, you know, it's a stage, it's a screen. But this thing is like getting power and banging out of the glass. And at the very last minute, it breaks out. And then he comes on stage at the Baphomet head. Good God. It's like, <sighs> there's kids in the audience. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying there, there's always been evil in the world, 100%. But it's just a little more blatantly obvious. Yeah, now, now it's more yeah. in your face. They're, they're, they're saying the quiet part out, out loud. loud. Now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's Baphomet. Right. Yeah. I mean, Baphomet's been worshipped for a long time. Eons, yeah. But now it's like, oh, now there's a 50-foot one, and we all dance to it. Yeah, yeah. it's just... And, and you know, it, it, the, the sad thing, I mean, most of those people probably in the audience have no idea. No idea. At all. What that is. Mm-hmm. They're there, they pay their $300 for a ticket, and they're, they want to have a good time. You know, when you spend that much money for something, quote-unquote, fun, you kind mm-hmm. of ignore all the small stuff just to make sure you have a good time. Yeah. And you're you're still a part of these rituals. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it? It was uh, Joe Gatto. Remember, he took his daughters last yeah, year yeah. to a Taylor Swift concert, and he made them leave within the first song, and he made this big. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, and because uh, I don't even know if Joe Gatto's a Christian or anything like that, but he was saying that the blatant like there was so much satanic stuff, just blatantly obvious. Good, the Taylor good. Swift show, like there's kids, there's yeah. nine, you know, there's nine year olds at these shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did not know where this episode was going to go. I mean, either I think it's been fantastic, <laughs> but I think I do. I do think you met a demon, and I think if you would have taken him up on any offer, there would have been payment later. Mm-hmm. And I do think you met an angel. Mm-hmm. What's your opinion? I, I do too. I agree I on both. Too. Well, 
we want to th- thank you for coming on. It's been amazing. I didn't know where we were going to end up with this episode, but it's <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I loved it. You got me yelling the word bath. Right. I met my wife's probably freaking out in the living room. <laughs> uh, but it's been really good. Everybody, uh, I'll have your links. So for your, your YouTube videos, where to get the calendar and where to buy your paintings off of your, you know, Facebook and everything like that. Excellent. You, you can support them. I'll have all the links below to make it as easy as possible. Uh, we'll, we'll see you at Crypticon. So if anybody's come to yeah. Crypticon, maybe we'll be next to each other again. Yeah, that'd yes. be fun. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Let's, let's let's go out and have a drink. Oh, oh absolutely. You don't got to twist my arm. Yeah. So <laughs> he'll be having one. Now he don't have to go out for that. He'll have one in there. I I that's not. We're yes. not allowed to do that. I don't know what you're I talking mean, about. I mean, I no. I just water water water. water. It wasn't straight yeah. liquor. Yeah. Uh, no. So we like to end these by. All screaming by, and then the outro will play. Okay. So if you're good with that, we'll count down from three. We'll scream by, and you'll hear the outro music. <laughs> okay. If you, so if you're ready, three, two, one. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to Crips of the Corn podcast. Please share with a friend you think would like us. It's the best way to help our show grow. Leave a comment, rate us, a five-star review, and remember, there is always extra content on Patreon slash CryptoTheCorn.com. And don't forget, stay magical.